And welcome into this edition of ACAP Today for the week of February 7th, 2022. I'm Jason Parent with the Aroostook County Action Program. On this week's edition of ACAP Today, we're going to talk about a program that's available to seniors who rent here in the county to help with the cost of utilities. We recognize that many seniors have been turning to us concerned about the higher cost of things like groceries, fuel oil, and uh, utilities like electricity. We have a program that may be able to help, and we're going to talk about that on this week's edition of ACAP Today. But we're first going to begin with our news and information that you can use, and we're going to actually begin our news and information that you can use by telling you a little bit about this program to begin with. And we're going to share with you first and foremost that this program is the Emergency Rental Assistance Program. And you may have been hearing about it over the past several months as we've been talking about it. But it does help cover the cost of electricity, water, store, trash, heat, and potentially internet uh, for applicants. Again, individuals who are renting um, and who are even in subsidized rental situations. We're gonna talk a little bit more about that in our feature interview today, but we wanted to make folks right at the top of the broadcast aware about this program. We are working in partnership with the Aroostook Agency on Aging to help make seniors in our community aware of this program and the opportunity to apply for it. And we know that some seniors have expressed some concern about their um, they're getting an offset from this program or their income appearing to have increased and it potentially having an impact on other programs. We're gonna talk with our two guests in a little bit about why that's not the case and why it won't in impact your household income. We'll do that again in the feature interview. In the meantime, we move on to again, share that the Home Energy Assistance Program is continuing to accept applicants for this season. We're reaching about the 5,000 mark in terms of the number of individuals that we've reached. And we have appointments available beginning shortly here in March. Uh, so if you have not yet applied this season for the Home Energy Assistance Program and your income, whether it's just in the last month or over three months or in the last year, meets these income qualification guidelines on the screen for your household size, or perhaps is just slightly above it, it's certainly worth applying or giving us a call to see if it's worth applying. You can call us directly in our Home Energy Assistance Program line at 768-3053 or email ACAP at energy acap at a, energy at ACAP, I should say, dash me.org. We also want to share with you that it is tax season now and uh, free tax preparation appointments are available for households with a combined income of less than $58,000 a year. You can make your appointment to have your taxes reviewed here and prepared here in Aroostook County by dialing 211 Maine, just dial 211 on your phone, or you can visit cashmain.org to schedule your appointment online. Again, this is available for households that earn less than $58,000 a year, and there's absolutely no cost to this service. The tax services are being offered in Presque Isle, Fort Kent, and Holton, and we can certainly look to help make an appointment for you where it's closer for you to get to. They're also offering some virtual appointment options, and we encourage you to call 211 Maine or visit cashmain.org to find out more. Project TEACH, we shared this with you a few weeks ago on ACAP Today. It stands for Transportation, Education, Access, Care, and Housing. It's for anyone facing challenge, challenges with cancer and attending their oncology appointments due to transportation or lodging issues. We encourage folks in that situation to please reach out to Andrea White at 764-3721, or you can email her at awhite at acap-me.org to learn more about the program. There are no income guidelines for this program, and really the goal is to ensure all cancer patients have the necessary tools to receive the care that they need. It's a project of ACAP in partnership and through funding from the Maine Cancer Foundation. We also want to remind folks that our Breakthrough Youth Program in Aroostook County started in Presque Isle earlier this month at two different locations at the SAD1 Adult and Community Education Center, as well as at the Birch Street Community Center of the Presque Isle Housing Authority. We do have a class that's starting up this week on February 10th from 5 to 7 p.m. at the Eastern Aroostook Adult and Community Education Office in Caribou. It's off of Caribou High School. We certainly encourage any youth aged 14 through 24 or parents of youth, youth ages 14 through 24 to make them aware of this opportunity. Uh, it provides a variety of services, including financial literacy information, uh, information about responsible decision making, and also connecting with opportunities uh, for employment or helping to discover what career field might be best for you. Again, it's the break Breakthrough Youth Program, and there's a brand new session starting up on February 10th from 5 to 7 at the Adult Education Office at Caribou High School. 
We also want to share with you that we are about to start a next session of the um, Freedom from Smoking class, the smoking cessation class that we offer. It is being offered this week, beginning on the 7th of February, at the Presque Isle Adult Education Center. For more information, you can contact Elaine's site to register. Her telephone number and email address are there on your screen. If you're thinking of quitting in this new year, this is the perfect time to join and to have the levels of support this program offers. We encourage you to, again, consider uh, quitting smoking and using this program as an opportunity to help you. If you are unable to attend the February 7th class, still please reach out to Elaine Sype. She will be able to connect you with other program offers or maybe, maybe even get you into this class uh, a little bit delayed. We also wanted to share what you might have heard on the news on WAGM last week that we, in partnership with our sister cat, Penquist, uh, continue to offer a foster grandparent program throughout Aroostook County. This provides seniors or individuals, older adults in our community, ages 55 and older, who would like to volunteer and serving with children at and, and youth at schools, nonprofit child care centers and preschools. Uh, the actual volunteer receives a tax-free stipend that won't affect, as we were talking about this earlier, their social security, rent subsidies, HEAP, or any other benefits. So it's not an opportunity uh, that, that is going to cost you anything and certainly will bring much to your life. Uh, we do have a volunteer, a foster grandparent who volunteers in our early care and education programs. She gets a lot out of it and so do the youth that she serves. So we certainly encourage you to consider enrolling for this program and consider ACAP as one of the sites. Uh, early, we have early care and education sites in Fort Kent, Caribou, Presque Isle, Holton, and Dyer Brook, and we'd certainly welcome foster grandparents into those. You can call 1-800-215-4942, extension 3611, if you would like to learn more information about this program or to register to become a foster grandparent. We also are reminding folks of the free COVID-19 test that can be delivered right to your door. You can uh, log on to the website on your screen here if you have an interest in receiving those. They are free and will come right to your door. There's a maximum of four per address. Uh, so we want to make you aware of that. The orders will typically ship between seven and 12 days. So just to be aware of that, uh, that delay there. We also want to remind you about vaccination that's available across Aroostook County and across the state of Maine. The website that's listed here on your screen can lead you to various vaccination clinic appointments across uh, Aroostook County and in other parts of the state as well. You can also call us here at ACAP at 764-3721 and our reception team will be happy to help you if you are unable to get online for whatever reason or to locate an appointment, they will help you do that. Anyone who is 12 and older and has already received the COVID-19 vaccine is eligible for a booster shot. And these sites also offer booster shots. So if you are in need of a booster shot, again, give us a call or check out this website on the screen. And also, if you are looking for transportation, don't let transportation or the lack thereof to not be able to get to an appointment be the reason you don't get vaccinated or boosted. There is a free vaccine ride program that is being offered through the Maine Department of Health and Human Services. Uh, to find out more information about that or to schedule an appointment, please, 48 hours in advance, call 1-855-608-5172. We also are reminding folks of the COVID-19 community supports that we are offering as an agency across Aroostook County. These, this is specifically for individuals who are asked to quarantine or to isolate in their homes. And it includes the opportunity to have groceries and meals delivered to your address uh, and, and provides you with other supports to be able to shelter and stay in place within your home while you are considered uh, in needing to quarantine or isolate for COVID-19. If you or anyone that you know are in need of these services, you can give us a call at 764-3721, or you can go directly online to the main CDC COVID-19 referral form. The address is there on your screen, or you can just uh, Google community supports uh, in Maine for COVID, uh, and it will get you to that site. Again, this is free. Not only is the delivery free, but the materials, uh, the groceries and other items are, are free to you within a certain limit, um, and we'd be happy to do that for you. If you have loved ones outside of the area that live in another part of the state and are in need of these services, with their permission, you can also also go online and have the delivery sent to them in their part of the state because our sister cap agencies across Maine are also doing this program to cover the entire state. And lastly, in this week's news and information you can use, if you or your family is in need of any assistance at all, and we perhaps haven't covered it in this week's edition of the news and information that you can use on ACAP today, we encourage you to reach out to us and to connect with a navigator. Our navigators can be reached by calling our main line, 764-3721. We have them located throughout Aroostook County, and they will gladly connect with you to see what services and programs might be available both within ACAP and outside of our agency to connect and get you the help you need at this time. 
And that's this week's news and information that you can use. I'm pleased to welcome now as our guest to the program, uh, two individuals who are no strangers to ACAP today. Sherry Locke is ACAP's Director of Advancement and Heidi Ratcliffe is ACAP's Director of Programs. And Heidi and Sherry, we're going to be talking in this edition of ACAP today about a program that we've shared before with individuals, but maybe turn, uh, sort of turn the light a little bit on it and look at it a little bit differently because we know we've been talking with people about this program for a while, uh, but certain circumstances in our community of late and increased cost on things have certainly made this a more urgent topic. So Sherry, maybe if you could just set the scene in terms of what we're talking about here and what we're experiencing in the community. Um, and then we'll go to talk with Heidi specifically about the program. Absolutely. So I think it's important to note that the Emergency Rental Assistance Program has been a program ACAP has been offering for several months and very successfully helping individuals and families um, that are renting with their rent and also their utilities. But what we're finding is that older residents in University County who are renters are not taking advantage of this program. So we really have decided to expand our campaign, sharing different information about this program, and really target it to those older residents of University County, letting them know how this program can benefit them and how they best can apply for these services. Really want to make sure that anyone and everyone who's living in Aroostook County that's a renter that qualifies um, income wise um, is taking advantage of this program as we're seeing um, expenses grow here in Aroostook County, especially for those living on a fixed income. And Sherry, before we go on to some of the specifics of the program with Heidi, we are um, sort of enlisting the help of a trusted community partner to sort of help seniors understand that this is not a situation that's going to actually uh, not be beneficial to them moving forward, because we've heard a lot of concerns from seniors in our community. So talk a little bit about that. That's exactly right, Jason. We um, recently had a collaborative meeting with our partners at the University Agency on Aging, and this program was one that we discussed in a lot of details. And I think there's a lot of misinformation out there or um, not enough specific details uh, for the seniors in our community. Um, and the University Agency on Aging is really helping us, working with us, um, they're championing how can we get this information out to that older population and make them see how this could benefit them? Um, the Agency on Aging is a, a very much a trusted partner in Aroostook County and a, a referral source. So we're really um, appreciative of their support on this and their expertise um, as we reach out to this very specific subpopulation. So Heidi Ratcliffe, let's talk about the Emergency Rental Assistance Program and why this might be the lifeline that seniors, those who rent anyway, um, certainly who are facing increased utility and heating costs might look at this and say, gosh, this is an opportunity for me to really um, control some of those costs and help at this time. Oops, we, and you're muted, Heidi. I did unmute. Uh, I think you guys both nailed it on the head. I think that there is increased costs everywhere between the electricity bills advancing, the, the cost of groceries, the fuel prices. Um, I'm seeing an increase of, of up a hundred dollars for a hundred gallons of fuel oil of what it was compared to last year. Um, all of these things play such a critical part in why it is so important for seniors to be able to access. I often hear from seniors, I don't want it to go, I want it to go to somebody else who's more in need. And the reality is we have the funds available to help everybody that comes to the table. This is not giving it or taking it from somebody else in more need. Um, Everybody can use a help with the amount of the influx of increases everywhere. And this is the perfect program to do this because it's a direct benefit. It does not affect any of the other benefits that an individual may have, such as food stamps or your housing cost prices um, if you're in subsidized housing. Um, so it's really the perfect program to be able to bring home that extra assistance and that little bit of relief to say, hey, right now I can have this covered so I can concentrate on that increased electricity bill. I can concentrate on all those other expenses that, that are hurting um, community members. So Heidi, just so seniors are aware, you indicated that you, you, know, you could have the rent offset so that you can focus on the electricity costs, but it doesn't have to necessarily be one or the other. And if you're feeling like, gosh, my rent cost is fixed, I haven't seen an increase in my rent where I really need my help is in electricity, this program can be a portal for either or both, correct? Yeah, absolutely. I, th I think that the program is the perfect opportunity to say, yes, you might not have increased in your rent, but but you're hitting those increases when you fill up your gas tank or, or when you see that electricity bill. And so offset this benefit with those increased costs to make it more livable and breathable for the individuals. Um, we have 
a, such a huge percentage of individuals who have not utilized this program uh, which could be such a huge relief. Um, the program is very driven to be electronic. It's it's the applications are all online. And I'm, I worry that that is the deterrent for those seniors reaching us. But I want everybody to know that you can easily pick up the phone and call and do the application with individuals over the phone, where you can walk into an agency and we will do a hand application with you. That should not deter people from, from reaching this. Uh, we know that seniors are, are tend to often be more afraid of, of IT and technology in, in the world, and that's not the comfort spot for them. But there are other the avenues to get that need met um, with those fears in mind. So I, I do think it's just knowledge. It's knowing that it's out there, that it's existing, that it is created for this population. The income guideline is that you're, you're underneath the income program. And if you are a senior on fixed income, I would find it very hard pressed that you're not within the income guidelines to qualify for this program. Um, so we have the staff we, uh, available to meet this need. We have the availability to, to pump out way more applications. So we just need to find those people who we can help and what this program is intended for. Heidi, essentially, if you rent and you qualify for HEAP, you do qualify for this program because essentially the income qualification guidelines for HEAP are actually slightly 100%. lower. So, so, so individuals, we know that there are a lot of folks out there who rely on our home energy assistance program. Uh, the cost of fuel is higher this year, so that might not get you as far. The benefit might not get you as far this season. Um, so Sherry, Heidi touched a little bit on the importance of the multitude of ways in which seniors in particular, or community members as a whole, can engage with us because going online and completing application isn't everyone's cup of tea. So we really want to underscore that you can do this in, a, in, in, in the way that is best accommodating to your need. That's absolutely right, Jason. It's really about just getting, um, get, you know, reaching those folks and then finding the best way to provide that application. So if you are tech savvy and you want to go on to the ACAP website and complete the application, that's fantastic. If you want to call our office at 764-3721, one of our team members can do that right over the phone. The application takes about 10 minutes. If you do it yourself, it takes about 10 minutes. If you call us and we do it again, about 10 minutes. If you want a paper copy, again, just contact our office. We're happy to mail you a paper copy of the application. You mail it back to us and we'll enter it in that way. We really, really, really wanna just stress it, um, that if you qualify for this program, if you're a renter in Arista County and you follow the income guidelines, let us know how we can help you get enrolled in this program. As Heidi mentioned, you can pick and choose. Do you want help with your rent? Do you want help with your utilities? Do you want help with all? Um, the program can really um, mix and match to meet your your individual need. Um, so, you know, really truly reach out if you have a friend or a neighbor or a parent or a grandparent that may qualify, encourage them to apply. Heidi touched upon something that I thought was um, one of the things that I keep hearing in the community is I receive subsidized rental, so I wouldn't qualify. And that is not the case. Um, you could still qualify, you do still qualify for this program in addition to the rental, also the utility portion, even if utilities are included in your rent. So again, we really want to assess this on a case-by-case -case basis. So it's so important that renters contact us. Heidi, let's speak to that for a minute. I'm gonna have you on mute to speak to the, to the subsidized renters because many of our seniors are subsidized renters across Aroostook County. Um, is the process different for them? What can they expect? Many I've heard seniors you know, who have applied for this program are concerned because they're very dutiful and di diligent about paying for their rent and is there a, a lapse? So just, just speak to that if you would. So one of the really neat things is the Department of Treasury gave us the availability to pay someone's rent future. Um, so as we process the, the, the rent, we can actually pay current arrears and future three months pending the individuals interested in receiving that service. So the actual, if you're in subsidized housing in order to the future, the, the money goes directly to the tenant themselves. Um, and they're continued, they're eligible for continued assistance pending they provide us the rent receipts that they use those that money towards their rent. Um, so it's really setting you up ahead of time um, to ensure that your need is met um, and then going back and, and saying, I, I could use another three months. 
Um, I think that I've heard some really smart cases of seniors saying, I didn't know how I was going to get new winter tires um, because on a fixed income, you have to budget. So because this program was available, I was able to do this need that I would have otherwise gone on met. And that is huge. And that is why seniors should be taking advantage of this program. Uh, it's often I can't get my new eyeglasses or dentures or all of these things that go unmet or because they are so tightly funded and they have to ensure that every penny goes to basic essentials. Um, this is a basic essential that we can help you with and we have the funding to do. So you can take advantage and, and use those as an opportunity to get those needs met that would have otherwise gone unmet. Um, so, so yeah, everybody should apply. Um, I, one of my favorite stories was um, literally a tenant who said, I, I'm in, in treatment all the time and I travel all the time for treatment to Bangor. And um, I've never heard about this program and, and you literally gave it me the funding to be able to do my treatment for gas. Um, and that was, a, that was a hard hit. That was a hard story to swallow because this lady was was struggling to pay rent because she was sacrificing to do these medical treatments. And those are the stories, those are the people we're after. This is what the program is intended to do. I think that's really important to understand that folks that may not say, oh, gosh, it's not my rent that's going up. I need to be able to, I need to get those winter tires or I, I, my, I could use a new furniture set or gosh, I'd even like to be able to support my grandchild college education fund a little bit more. This is the opportunity to do that. It's just the form of the assistance right now is coming through the emergency rental assistance program. So we just help, to help people understand that concept and then to get over the obstacle that we talked about earlier, which is that it's not going to count against your income or as part of your income because the payment will go directly to the landlord or it will go directly to the utility company. Heidi, talk about electric utilities one, but there are other utilities that can be covered through this program as well. So there are. So we actually are able to help cover pending a legal binding lease. Um, we are able to cover security deposits. We're able to cover internet expenses, trash, water, sewer, um, any any utility that come and that could be associated with a rental um, unit. The only ones that again aren't really associated with the rental unit would be the um, internet costs that we're able to do. Um, but beyond that, the person just has to submit their bill um, and meet that income threshold. And then going forward, we would we would pay all of those pending we have the physical bills to be able to make those payments. So before I ask you about that process so that folks understand once an application comes in, what happens, because those expectations are important for folks to understand. I just want to clarify for folks that if I'm still out there and I'm really reticent and I'm a subsidy, I'm living in subsidized housing and I, I don't know if my landlord is going to be supportive of this project or not. There is an opportunity for you to apply as a renter for the utility, for the utility portion of that assistance minus the internet and just get the support for the utilities, correct? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Someone can pick and choose, is, as Sherry said earlier. You can say, I just want help with my internet bill. I just want help with the, the utilities. I just want help with this part. You pick and choose. It's like a customized package. You build it for what you want and you can use access for. And, and we have individuals who do that. We have individuals that say, no, I'm solid with my rent, but if you could help me with this portion, I will take care of this. Or I only want it for one month. I don't want it for three months. That's completely an individual's choice. The, the program is there and accessible in the need, in the position that somebody needs it and wants it. Um, that's the first, that's the first barrier is just getting people in the door. So help uh, folks out there to understand, I think if we've got them interested in, in applying for this program to either offset some electrical cost or, or, or to be supported in, in a more holistic ways we've just talked about. Um, help us understand, help the individual understand what will happen after they either complete that application online or pick up the phone and give us a call and somebody completes that application for them or hands us back a paper application once it's been filled in. Talk about the process from there. Sure. So once we receive an application, our team is within a week notification of, of taking that application and starting the, the process of processing it. Um, there's certain proof that we, we have to have in order to move forward. So we need a copy of that binding lease. Um, there's other things that we have if an individual doesn't always have a lease, proof of ownership um, for the renter. Um, so we do have to send a, a form out to the landlord verifying in fact that they are a landlord pending they want the rental assistance. Um, once we receive all of the proof that we need, so the documentation from the landlord and all of the supporting documents for the tenant based on what they want, again, that customized package, uh, then we can move it forward and we can send it to a certifier. 
that time frame and that window really depends on the client receiving the services. I have some tenants and some some that, that, that I'm going to get you that proof tomorrow. Fantastic. You get me that proof tomorrow, your application moves faster. Um, we've had tenants that it takes several weeks for them to gain that document. So it pushes the application process out a little bit more because we cannot move until we're following our obligations and guidelines set by the funding source. Again, after that proof is all in, it goes to a certifier. A certifier has a small time frame to be able to review, assess that everything is there, get sent to finance, which we have 12 business days to cut that check and that funding out. So it is staged. There's several levels that the application has to go, but pending everything is there in a timely manner, it can be accomplished within a couple of weeks. Great. And, and, and though, it, again, it depends on your ability to receive the paperwork. I think it also depends on uh, the flow at the period of time, because there are periods of time where there's a, a greater volume Absolutely. of applications than others. So there are variables on both ends. When we first started this program, we had about 800 in the waiting list, um, and, and we are at a point the team is very comfortable, they're very familiar with the process, um, it's nothing for them to go through at this point, um, and at, again, at current to date, our queue, we're processing within about a week time out, so um, again, it really comes back to the how fast that landlord and tenant is willing to move to get us those documents to move it to the next step. Heidi, is an applicant assigned to a single individual and that a communication pattern begins with that individual? So if you hear from someone, that's going to be your point of contact? Correct. Uh, we found the most success with it being one person working with that case all the way through until it goes to certification. Um, so when that one person contacts you, that's the one person that has your case. We have a receptionist specifically for this program. So everybody that comes in with needs, questions, wants status updates, we do we push all of those requests through that receptionist. So our intake team has the ability to do their job. They're the only ones capable of doing their role. So we do have a designated staff person that has the ability to give those status updates, tell you if the proof has been received, tell you what we need to keep the process going. Um, when there's specific case questions, then we toss it to that specific intake worker, but there is an obligation on, on behalf of all of our staff that voicemails and emails are returned within a 24-hour period. Sherry, one of the things that you did this past week was to spend some time at the uh, Cash Coalition's Tax Preparation Services, the, the session in Presque Isle, and we know that there are other sessions coming up uh, here in other parts of Aroostook County as well. Um, but a number of the folks who go to through the tax preparation services are seniors. We also have families with young children. Um, so I know that you connected with some households directly at that opportunity uh, and some seniors and particularly both on the ERA program and the HEAT program. What was that interaction like and what was the feedback that you received? So it really was a, a great interaction and really great to, to talk to the community about what their needs are and the resources that are available. Um, one of the things that I heard over and over again was, yes, I've heard about that program, but I don't think I qualify. And we will share that the program has evolved um, since it started, and there have been some changes that have expanded who we can offer these services to. So I think that's an important piece is if you are a renter living in Aroostook County, take another look at this program. This program, you could qualify for it. Um, you may not have when it initially came out for whatever reason, but the program has changed and expanded. So we are seeing so many more people um, that qualify. I had one individual, I showed them, you know, the new income guidelines and by gosh, they qualified. Um, so it, that really was really, really great. And I, the same goes for our home energy assistance program, Jason. Maybe folks didn't qualify in the past, um, but do now. Or, and, and it may be because um, our guidelines have expanded, but it may be because their situation has changed as well. Um, and the other piece that I found when I was there was that a lot of folks qualified for both and didn't even realize it. And again, they, they've heard a lot about these programs in the community, but never really took that deep dive because they thought they were over income um, because of how things had been in the past. So it really was a great day. Um, out of the 25 households that the Cash Coalition served that day, I think we were able to connect eight of them with these services, which is huge. Um, absolutely huge. The piece that I love the best is, you know, once you become an ACAP customer, really our focus is connecting you to all of the programs and services that'll benefit you and your family, if you are willing. We obviously are not going to force programs or services on anyone, but maybe when you come to us, you know, for an immediate need, you may not realize we have three or four other programs that could benefit you or your family. So it's just about that initial connection and how we can 
you know, best serve our community. So I would really encourage anyone um, who is a renter just to take a look at this program and really want to thank our partners at the Aristic Agency on Aging and the um, Cash Coalition for allowing us to be part of that because it really is just about making those connections, explaining the programs um, that will allow us to help more people here in Aristic County. And Sherry, uh, I think Heidi made this point earlier, but it's certainly worth underscoring. One of the other impediments oftentimes to connecting with one of these programs is simply, especially in our senior community, uh, the thought or the concept and idea that um, if I apply for this program, there are more needy people that will not get it than I, and that's not the case. It's not the case at all. We are very, very fortunate right now that we have enough resource to help the entire community. The more people that we help, actually, the better. Let's, you know, let's utilize this money um, in Aristotle County to support the hardworking people that live here. Um, so we will let our community know if there's ever a time that there's not enough resource, we will certainly let you know. But for now, we have enough and we really want to help everyone and anyone who is eligible. This program can support a household for up to 18 months. And, and I think that's huge. Um, it really will help people, um, you know, adjust to these fast paced increases um, in costs that we're seeing, especially things like electric and fuel. Heidi, I did have a question at the tax site and I, I forwarded it on to your team, but does the emergency rental program, can that help with fuel? Because I had a family that was over income for HEAP. So can you answer that for my own knowledge? Sure. Yeah, so it, it actually can, that's a utility, pending that they are a renter um, and they're within those income guidelines, um, we absolutely can. We didn't really have many fuel requests um, when the program first started up. I can tell you that we probably help about 10 ERA households a day with fuel requests. And that's in addition to their regular heat benefit that they could access. And so we do a really great job at the agency of ensuring that that individual is a heat customer, that they've used that benefit and that they've, they're enrolled into that program. And then if they already have and they have no additional resources, then we use ERA. But it's really important because ERA is a short time program that's not going to be around forever. So we really want to make sure that they have access to the to, to HEAP, which is an ongoing program that we've had consistently for year after year. Uh, so it's about really simultaneously blending and braiding the programs and ensuring that somebody is whole concept is, is focused on, like, as you said, with the navigators reaching out afterwards. That's really great to hear, Heidi and Sherry. Thank you for bringing that question up because there may be very well, I suspect there are seniors out there who are in rental situations right now who are, because of maybe retirement income, um, not able to qualify for the HEAP program, but the differential between the ERA program and the HEAP program in terms of income eligibility guidelines may be able to be of help to them during this unusually spiked cold winter with the spike cost in both electricity and heating. So um, certainly something worth looking at if you're a senior out there and discounting that you might, you're not gonna be eligible for ERA because you're not eligible for HEAP, not true. Um, look into that because we certainly would encourage you to apply, especially with all the variables uh, that we're facing in this current winter season. Uh, before we leave um, today's ACAP today, a couple of other quick topics since you're both here with me. Sherry, first of all, we've been talking about and touching upon uh, the tax program. We had a previous um, conversation about that, a previous ACAP today, not that many weeks ago, but you are now in active tax prep season. Talk about what folks uh, can expect. And again, uh, I am assuming there are still open appointments at this point through the rest of the season. That's exactly right, Jason. We have a really strong coalition this year um, led by the United Way of Aroostook, including New Ventures, Maine and the County Federal Credit Union, along with our team at ACAP. There are appointments in person. Uh, the majority of those are in Presque Isle, and that is just based on uh, the volunteers that are uh, available to do this program. There's a lot of um, training, as I'm sure you can imagine, to become an IRS trained tax preparer. So uh, the majority of the sites are in Presque Isle, but we do have a day in Holton and a day in Fort Kent. Um, the biggest piece that I love this year, though, is we have scan and go options, so virtual options to get your taxes done, and your taxes can be scanned in at the ACAP locations in both Presque Isle, uh, Fort Kent, and Holton. Tax preparer will contact you once they have all that documentation, ask any additional questions that they may have, do your taxes from their home, um, and then you will get all of that paperwork back, returned back to the location that you had your paperwork scanned. So it's really a great new way to make sure that we can help more people countywide. Um, so I would encourage anyone um, who's interested, all you need to do is dial 211, so that's a free call. Let them know if you wanna do an in-person 
or if you want to do a scan and go, and they'll provide you with all of your options here in Aversity County. Um, but again, this program is volunteer driven um, and we're really on pace. The, the first week was a huge success. The volunteers were really ready to go. Um, so we're, we really want to make sure that we're helping anyone and everyone who's eligible. Income guideline for that program is $58,000 per household. So again, that's a lot of our, our retirees living on a fixed income, a lot of our young families. And then after that appointment, you connect with um, an opportunity guide to learn about um, different resources here in University County. So we're really using these programs to layer um, our touches and the way that we can help people here in University County. So really excited uh, about that program again this year. And you did touch upon it. We've been talking a lot about seniors in this program and certainly seniors are a, a huge part of the population that will be served through this program and we encourage them to, to sign up for an appointment. Uh, but there's also a, a great incentive, especially this year for families with young children to take advantage of these free tax prep programs. Absolutely. The, the tax laws are complicated, as we all know, and with the earned income tax credit and the advanced earned income tax credit that families saw last year, things got even more complicated. But there is a huge benefit for families to complete their taxes and to have an IRS certified filer do that for them, including the earned income tax credit, which can be a huge um, support for families, especially families of young children. So again, would encourage families, you gotta wait for all your documents and a lot of families haven't received them yet, especially related to that um, advanced child care credit that folks receive throughout the year. But once you have all of your documentation, really, really, really would encourage you to call 211 to either schedule an in-person or a scan and go, whatever works best for you to make sure that you're getting your full refund back, that you are you know, putting, um, you know, putting that to use to support yourself and your family during these times where prices have increased. So, so important, but know that the resource is there and young families are especially, um, especially, um, you know, we want to urge you to go so that you're making sure that you're getting every dollar back to help support your family. Especially right now, certainly could use it. Heidi Ratcliffe, I uh, want to transition off of this topic for just a minute and to another one that's uh, really especially important for us this week, and that's what is happening in Aroostook County uh, to help individuals experiencing homelessness, which talk about the crisis situation and, and, and what we're doing to help uh, as a community collaborative to make a difference. So I, I don't think I could have probably been more proud of the community and the individuals that came forward to say, we have a problem. Um, and that was really driven by the community stakeholders um, who identified early on that there were we were in a crisis situation. We have a full low barrier shelter. Um, we have hospitals calling on the daily saying they have individuals experiencing homelessness using beds um, that were being unfortunately not able to be used by an individual that was ill. Um, we had several police stations say that they had folks sleeping in their lobbies because they did not want them to be out in the elements. Um, and not to mention the about 75 households, not, not individuals, households, we have financially supported by the ERA program um, in hotels across Arusta County. This is the first time that we've hit a, an area where we don't have the resources to support the impact and what we're seeing in the community. And it was that group that said, what can we do and how can we put our heads together to be able to fix the solution? Um, we were lucky enough to have a supportive um, local homeless shelter and their board really rise to the occasion and step up to say, we're willing to take this challenge on and this is how we're going to do this um, with partnerships from from many other organizations um, in order for the shelter to do this they have to change their scheduling patterns so they're changing scheduling patterns and and, and our agency acap has taken on the day responsibility so all of the shelter residents that will be utilizing this extra space available will be shifted to our facilities between the hours of eight to five to, to give the homeless shelter the time to, to cook, to clean, to prepare for that influx of people that are that are gonna be accessing the shelter. Um, and, and again, I just couldn't be more proud of the community. Um, it was a scary time and I don't think many realize just how many individuals experiencing homelessness we have in Aroostook County. Um, unfortunately, this is this is a band-aid on the situation. We have a lot more work to do as a community to get us out of this situation long term. Um, but I think we're moving forward in the right directions and, and people are stepping up to say, hey, we're not going to let this happen. And this is what I'm willing to do. So speaking of the community, um, the community has rallied to get us to this point, but we are also turning to the community to help to help us uh, take care of the additional capacity at this point. So both um, both 
ACAP and the homeless services of Aroostook are in need of assistance from the community right now to be able to meet the need. You want to speak to that for a moment and how people watching out there might be able to help? Absolutely. I don't think there's any level of what you can give. There is every every person can contribute something, whether that is I can I can give you a couple hours of my time to help serve out those dinners. I can um, buy puzzles to entertain people who are going to be in a facility for a long period of time or meals, just the meals. I'm willing to contribute a huge lasagna. Um, that's what my family can do if you don't have the time or availability. Heck, we can even support local businesses by saying, I don't have the time to do this because I'm busy, but I'm willing to buy some hot $5 hot and ready pizzas and that's what I can contribute you. Um, and residents love that, right? They get to experience things that we take often as, as a luxury or an advantage. Um, so I, I just think that there's so many things. We're going to need snacks. We're going to need water. We're going to need live bodies. Um, this is not something that we can handle without the support of the community. And I really think that everybody has a part in this and it'll go a lot farther and a lot easier with everyone being willing to do something in their capacity. Sherry Locke, I uh, want to talk quickly about meal train. Uh, that's, that's, that's one of the ways that people can connect in, in an easy way. Yes. So uh, the Hope and, Re uh, Hope and Prosperity Resource Center, we, as Heidi said, will be open from eight to five Monday through Friday. So we will be providing breakfast items in the morning as well as a lunch. So we're encouraging the community. If you are a good cook, we would love for you to go on to our Facebook page and sign up for the meal train. Meal train shows the calendar and you can pick the day that works best for you. And you can deliver a homemade meal to the residents that are going to be at the Hope and Prosperity Resource Center. Just another way for the community to help and and what shows our residents more support than knowing that someone took the time to make a meal in their kitchen, you know, to share with someone who may be down on their luck. So would really encourage you that if you are a cook to do that, um, if you have to work, you know, if you have to go to work, so you won't be home during the day to cook, we can make that work too. You can drop something off that we just need to pop in the oven, whatever needs to happen, but really encourage the community, individuals, families, businesses, organizations to, to think about how they can make the situation better and how they can contribute, whatever that may be. And as Heidi said, if that's a yummy, cheesy lasagna, that's fantastic. If it's dropping off some snacks or waters, that's great. If it's volunteering your time at Homeless Services of Aroostook, that's great too. It's going to take all of these parts and pieces to make this possible for the next few months. Indeed. But what I, just to piggy off of that really fast, Sherry, I think I, one wish, one thing I wish that the community could see is when you do bring that meal, what it's like to see people's faces to say, it has been so long since I've had a home cooked meal. And how grateful and excited they are for that cookie <laughs> or something that they don't have a kitchen. They don't have the experience of the luxury to, to have that home cook made with extra love um, cookie. And, 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 and just the grateful, the, 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 the grateful faces um, truly makes it worth it. Indeed. Anything else that we've left off the table? I mean, I think we got quite a bargain out of this week's ACAP today. We've covered a lot of ground. <laughs> All right, hearing nothing else, uh, thank you all. Thank you to the two of you for joining us. And before we leave the rest of you for this week's edition of ACAP today, uh, we want to share with you again, uh, as we usually do at this point in the broadcast, that we want we are looking for individuals to join our team. Uh, whether you want to volunteer, as uh, Heidi indicated uh, earlier, um, you can certainly volunteer uh, with our organization or you can apply to become an employee at ACAP. We have several positions that are open currently and would certainly welcome the opportunity to have you join the ACAP team at any uh, point in time. Also, in addition to that, um, we want to share with you that we have a great number of benefits here within our agency um, and would encourage you again to apply for uh, a position within, a, within our organization here at ACAP. And just one more thing before we leave you on this week's edition of ACAP today, as we typically do at this point, we share with you our uh, photo of the week. And since the beginning of the year, we have been sharing the throwback snapshot of the week. This uh, throwback snapshot of the week comes from 1995, and it comes from our then Fort Fairfield Child Care Center. Uh, and this is ACAP team member Vicki Bolstridge, who is very much still a member of our ACAP team, and we just love having her. She is known as the mother of Gouldville, and she takes care of everything and all things at the Gould 
Schoolville Early Care and Education Center in Presque Isle, but there she is with three of the children that were being cared for at our Fort Fairfield Child Care Center back in 1985. So on behalf of Vicki, on behalf of Sherry and Heidi and all of our 220 ACAP team members strong from one end of Aroostook County to the other, again, thank you for joining us on this week's edition of ACAP Today. We'll be back next week with another edition and we'll see you then.